Hello, my name is Michael Kaler, and I am the lab manager of the IM Diffraction Facility located at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. You can see our sample here. It is tantalum deposited on a fused silica substrate. It is likely difficult to see any details given how reflective the surface is. It is held in place with a piece of removable double-sided tape. On the incident beam side, we just have a parabolic mirror. We expect this film to be about 30 nanometers, so I don't need high-resolution optics in order to see the fringes. This is the low-resolution setup, which is great for thinner films. For the divergence slit, I have the 132nd degree. For the mask, you can use whatever best fits your sample. For this experiment, I am using a 2mm mask, but I could very likely go larger. I expect a pretty good signal with this sample though, so I'll just stick with the 2mm mask. We also have a 0.04 radian solar slit. For the diffracted beam side, we have a 0.27 degree parallel plate collimator. The parallel plate collimator slit, or PPC slit, also known as a receiving slit. Here we have our large solar slits. Again, we will use the 0.04 radian. We also have our programmable attenuator and our xenon proportional detector. This is the setup that I will use for both alignment and data collection. First, I'm going to make sure my tension and current are good. I see that it is in standby mode, so I will set it back to 40, and then click OK. We then need to wait for the window to close by itself. Let's now go up to Incident Beam Optics to make sure that everything is set up correctly. I'll double click. My prefix module is the parabolic mirror. We don't need to change offsets. Divergence slit, I have the 132nd, so that's good. No anti scatter slit. I've got my 2mm mask installed. I have my 0.04 radian solar slit. No filter. My beam attenuator is on the other side, so this side is none. No monochromator. And by default, my mirror is here because I said that there was a mirror in my prefix module. It is in the standard configuration, so that's all good. Click OK. Come up to Diffracted Beam Optics, double click. My prefix module is the Parallel Plate Collimator, 0.27 degrees. I have no anti-scatter slit. My receiving slit is the Parallel Plate Collimator slit. I have no filter and no mask. My beam attenuator is the programmable beam attenuator, and the usage is do not switch and activated. If you are using a programmable beam attenuator, it is incredibly important that you set this correctly. If this says none or some other setting here, but you are depending upon your programmable beam attenuator to attenuate your beam, then it needs to read this or it could read preset intensity. That would also work, but it slows down your alignments. Ideally, you want it to be do not switch and activated. For me, we are just using the proportional xenon detector labeled as number one. Yours might be different. Parallel plate collimator is automatically set by my prefix module. No monochromator and I have the large 0.04 radian solar slits. I'll click OK. I'll come back here because I like to watch instrument settings. I'm going to do the alignment of the sample in two different steps. The first step will be automated, and the second one I'll do manually. If you want to learn how to make this automatic alignment program, please view the video that should have popped up at the top right of your screen. I'll also link it in the description below. I'll go to Measure, Program, Browse. I have a bunch of different programs set up here, but I'm going to use what I call the Auto Alignment Batch. 
I don't care about saving any of these alignment scans, so I will just click OK. I have this explanation of what exactly is going on along with video of the instrument as it is aligning in another video that should be linked on the top right of the screen and also in the description below. I highly recommend that you watch at least the first three scans, 2 theta, Z, and omega, to make sure that they look okay. If they do not look okay, you may need to adjust your scan parameters or remount your sample. Once the first omega scan looks good, which should be the third scan overall, you don't need to be as diligent about watching the results of each scan. And there we go. There's no program executing. All of my offsets have been saved, but those are not all the offsets that we need to set. I am going to start out by going into my instrument settings, double click. I'm going to change my 2 theta to 1.2, make sure my omega offset is zero, and then click OK. I think I'm going to come in here to my diffracted beam optics and change my programmable beam attenuator to at preset intensity and use 800,000 and 500,000. This just means that my attenuator will turn on at 800,000 counts per second and then turn off once it gets below 500,000 counts per second. This becomes important because for XRR scans, your intensity will start out very high, but then drop much lower. If you just have the attenuator on the entire time, that lower intensity data will likely be very noisy and you might lose some features. I'll click OK. Again, I like to watch my instrument settings, so I'll go back there. I will measure a manual scan again. This time, I will perform an omega 2 theta scan, set my range to 1. My step size, I'll typically set this based upon whatever I think my film thickness is. The thinner the film, the larger the period of oscillation. For thinner films, you can use larger step sizes than for thicker films. For this example, I might try 0.005 and I don't know. Let's just see what happens if I go with uh, 0.2 seconds. That'll be a 42 second scan. If these settings aren't great, then I haven't lost too much time. I can just reset them and try again. I'll click Start. I'm going to right click, Axes, and I'm going to put this in the logarithmic scale. Close. What we are going to see here is a very rough initial, basically an XRR scan. It is always great if you see some fringes on this, that bodes well for your actual measurement. Even if you don't see fringes, it is possible that your experiment might still be okay. It's just that we are doing a very quick scan. It always starts to worry me a little bit though if I don't see any fringes on this. In this case though, we see some very large fringes, so this is great. I'm guessing somewhere around here we see our critical angle. I'm guessing this might be approximately the top of our very first fringe. It kind of blends in into this drop down. What we want to do is right click, move mode, and then drag this over to where we think the maximum of our first fringe is. If you don't see any fringes and you want to continue on to see if further alignment and then a longer scan will show you some fringes, just leave this marker where it was at 0.6 omega and then continue on with these following steps. I will next perform another omega scan using a pretty small range as I don't expect my omega to change by too much. 0.0025 I always do 1 100th of the range, and I'll use 0 0.1. I think I'm going to try coming back over here to my diffracted beam optics and set this back to do not switch inactivated. 
Click OK. Go back to my instrument settings and start. We already aligned Omega in our initial setup, but this might change it a little bit. I see I am still in log scale, so I will right click, axes, linear, and close. Not the nicest feature, but I'll right click, peak mode, and move to. It moved a little bit. Close. I will then go to Chi, and for Chi, you typically want a much larger range. I find 5 usually works pretty well. My range will be 0 0.05, and I'll just leave it at that time per step. For most of my samples, I find that Chi doesn't really change by much. I'd say less than 0 0.1 degree, but we will see how this looks. This isn't too bad. Again, I will right click, peak mode. Okay, about 0 0.12 isn't much. I'll move to, close. I'll come back here, do one more omega scan like before, 0 0.25. 0.0025, and that should do it. We'll just make sure that Omega is still centered. If not, we'll adjust it a little bit. I'm not sure why my Omega peak is a little asymmetric. It might just be my sample. I'm not going to worry too much about it. It looks pretty good. I'll still right-click peak mode, which will probably shift it a little bit. I'll then move to and close. We now need to save this new Omega offset because as you saw, it changed a little bit. We can come up here to user settings and there's different ways to use sample offsets and fine calibration offsets. In the past, I would use fine calibration offsets only for my two theta system alignment Anything sample related, I would just use the sample offset area. That's back when I did all of my alignments strictly manually. Now that I run them automatic, I tend to put everything in fine calibration offsets and redo everything for each different sample. I'll go into my fine calibration offsets. What we want to do is enter a value for omega that is half of whatever this two theta is. I'll come down here to my calculator, type in 0 0.8738 divided by 2, 4369. I'll change this to 4369, hit tab on the keyboard. We saw this value here change. These are now all of my actual offsets. Let's close this out because we don't need the manual scan anymore. I'll come over to my diffracted beam optics, change this back to my preset intensity. I'll click OK. I am then ready to set up an experiment. For this, I'll just make a new program. If you already have a program that you like, you can just run that. This will be an absolute scan. OK. For your scan axis, I'd say you can choose either omega 2 theta or 2 theta omega. I tend to run omega 2 theta as that is how I was originally trained. For my start angle, I'll probably pick something very low like 0 0.1. That's what we used for the quick alignment XRR pattern. That started at 0 0.1 and looked good, so I'll just do the same here. My end angle, I will usually pick something like 4. Maybe that far isn't needed, but usually that seems pretty good for most of what I do. Step size, I didn't really check out to see how well that 0.005 worked on my quick scan. I probably should have paid more attention, and then I would know for sure what I should use here, if that was good, or if I should go larger or smaller. But I think I'm going to use that again because the pattern looked pretty decent. I have very wide fringes, so that's fine. We'll try it, see what happens. Time per step, I don't know. 
I might just do two seconds. That'll be about a 26 minute test. That might be overkill, but I want something that looks really nice for this video though, so I'll probably just go with that. Normally I would go with something shorter, maybe try one second to see if that gives me good enough data. If so, then you save some time. Just to make sure I get something nice for this video, I'm going to go a little longer and use two seconds. I'll then file, save as. I have a folder for my YouTube programs. I'll call this XRR 0.1 to 4 degrees, 005 step size, 2 seconds, and the whole thing takes about 26 minutes, if I can spell minutes right. I will save, and then come up here to measure, program, browse, and find it. I will click my folder icon. I will say this is an XRR scan. It is tantalum on SI02. I'll just leave it at that for now and click save. Okay. We will just watch as the data collect. I will right click, axes, and put this back in the logarithmic scale. And that completes all the steps needed for collecting XRR data. The next step will be to perform data analysis, which I will post in another video. Nikita and I thank you for watching, and we hope you have a great day.